Now, right now, I'm going to go into what we call the Pathfinder Investiture Service. These are all under ceremonies. Now, remember, in Pathfinder, we have got ceremonies like um, the Pathfinder Induction <laughs> Service, the Pathfinder Investiture Service, the Pathfinder Day. So these are these three very important ceremonies. Okay, so we have already covered induction last week. So today, we talk about investiture. So what is investiture? These are big words for some people, but it's simply what you might call a graduation service, right? Put it this way, it's a graduation. This is the occasion where the pathfinders are presented the tokens of their achievements, which are the honor patches, the pins for their classes, right? Uh, and all those insignia for the classes. And if they have become worthy of the uh, pathfinder excellent award, which is also called good conduct ribbon, they will get all these things. All right, on that day. Now, the Pathfinder Day, um, I mean, the Pathfinder Venture Service is, can be held together with the induction service. So if you want to do that, it's fine. But of course, that would mean you'll take a much longer time. And it's also good to have all these things on Pathfinder Day, meaning to say in the morning, you have the Pathfinder Day celebration for the worship, and then maybe come back in the evening for the Pathfinder induction and investiture. To try to do all three, uh, that might be too long, okay? But I have been to occasion where on Pathfinder Day, we did all three things. Uh, first, worship Pathfinder Day in the morning, come back in the afternoon or in the evening for the investor service as well as, a, I mean, induction as well as investor service. So it can be done this way, all right? Now, I would, here are some of the very important suggestions. Decorate the church well, all right? For the investor service, the national flag should be up. The Pathfinder flag should be up. And I do hope you have made your banners for the pledge, the law, the aim and motto. Put all these things up to create a certain ambience that this is a Pathfinder event, okay? And if possible, now it's not always possible, but if possible, invite the conference youth director to be present. This will lend prestige and significance to the event if you can uh, invite the youth director. And usually what the youth director does Every year, he tried to go to a different club uh, to uh, grace the occasion. Now, when I was a youth director, both at the mission level and the union level, every year I tried to go to a different club, right, uh, for such events, okay? And this is something that we do as youth directors. Now, here would be the sample speech before the investiture service. Now, it's a very long speech. I'm not going to read it. But essentially, at the beginning of the investiture service, by the way, this same speech can be read on Pathfinder Day 2. It's simply it chronicles and talks about the history of the Pathfinder Club, how it started almost 70 years ago in California. And since a humble beginning, it has spread its wings. And now there are 2 million Pathfinders worldwide with more than 100,000 clubs around the world, right? And so on and so on. And then they talk about the philosophy of the Pathfinder Club, how it's meant to uh, uh, more good character, steer them away from undesirable activities like drug, gambling, gang activities, and so on, right? And then finally, we talk about why we have the investors service, right? Which is to acknowledge the achievement of the Pathfinder. So it's always good to have a little speech as a preamble before you actually have the investors service, just in case they are first-time visitors who have no idea what investiture is all about. And, or for that matter, what Pathfinder is all about. So this is a speech always helps. So I have already written this speech, which has been used very widely. Uh, many people have asked me, so I come up with this a long time ago. So use that uh, if you have uh, nothing to fall on, okay? Now, after the speech concerning what the investiture service is all about, then the names of the successful candidates will be presented to the youth director, right? And do mention what each of the Pathfinder candidates have completed, that Pathfinder so-and-so have completed the friend class. And with that, he has earned the dog honor, the cactus honor, the, uh, the error modeling honor, or, or whatever, all right? Now, it is always uh, a policy, a tradition, that we always start off with the lower classes. We present candidates starting from the lowest class first before moving to the higher class. So don't start off with, the higher class, but start off with the lower class first, right? So that's usually the way we do that, okay? Now, you have to present the candidates to the conference youth director for investiture. And so here is the speech to be read by whoever the 
presiding officer is for that investiture to the conference group director who will be presenting the uh, tokens. So first of all, you salute the youth director and while still saluting, say, say this to the youth director. Master guy so and so, that means this pastor. Master guy, so, by the way, in a Pahana event, we normally do not call someone pastor we, or someone mister. We always refer to him as master guy so and so, if he is a master guy. So in this case, if I was invited, some that person would say, Master Guy Simon Siu, all right, I am pleased to present to you the following candidates who has successfully completed the requirements for the whatever class, friend class, companion class, or whatever. Kindly accept them into the fellowship of friends or companion or explorer, whatever it is. Thank you, sir. Now, this is a standard speech in which first you acknowledge the presence of the uh, officer, who usually the highest ranking one, who will be presenting the, the tokens, and that these candidates who will be presented have indeed successfully completed all the requirements, all right? And therefore, please accept them into the fellowship of whatever class they have completed, all right? So only after you've done that, you put, you, you uh, say thank you and wait for the officer to put down his hand before you put down your hand. This is a mark of respect. This is all part of saluting protocol. You always salute first and wait for the officer to reply with a salute. And you always put down your hand in your hand salute after the officer has put down his hand. So first to salute and last to put down the hand. That is the protocol for saluting. All right. And this would be what the youth director will say in response to you, whoever the presiding officer is. Thank you very much. And he may, met, he may mention your name, director so-and-so or master guy so-and-so. If he's not master guy, let's call him director so-and-so. On behalf of the uh, Cape, Cape Conference or the Garfield or whatever the name of the organization, or in my case, on behalf of the Southeast Asian Union where I used to be youth director, then I'm pleased to accept them into the fellowship of friend class or whatever, okay? Please proceed or you may now proceed. So this is the acknowledgement uh, response, okay, that we say immediately after this has been presented to me. And with that, the presiding officer or his deputy will then read out the name of those to be invested one by one. Candidates will march up smartly, salute, the youth director first before receiving the tokens of their achievement from him. So that's always the case. Salute first and wait to receive the tokens or wait to have the tokens uh, pinned on your uniform or whatever it is, okay? Now, the MasterCard investiture is much more serious and has got a, 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 a certain dignity about it, solemnity. Ensure that, first of all, the MasterCard charge is always read to the candidate prior to investing them. Now, this is important. You never, never invest someone as a master guide without first reading out to him or her the master guide charge. And I'll explain to you what the master guide charge is. The master guide charge is to remind candidates, the master guide candidates, they are duty bound to return those leadership tokens, I'm talking about the master guide tokens, to the nearest conference office, youth department, should they no longer be able to live up to the standards or the life expected of master guides? You see, there's a certain conduct of master guides that they're supposed to hold on to a high standard. And if they feel they can no longer live that kind of life, as a matter of their own personal honor, as a personal trust, they should return those master guide tokens. This is just to show how uh, important it is to, uh, a responsibility it is to wear those tokens. And this is the MasterCard charge, okay? So if you have not seen it, this is how it will normally look like. All right, so whoever the candidate it is, if I were the youth director, I will say, uh, uh, so I will call him uh, MasterCard candidate, uh, uh, Daniel. You, have, you are about to be invested with a very important position of leadership, that of being a master guide. These leadership tokens represent the highest ideals of the Seventh-day Adventist Church Youth Department. For this reason, these tokens are to be kept in trust. Should you find that you are no longer able to live the life expected of a master guide, you are duty bound 
to return these tokens to the conference or the mission or the field field department. Do you understand this? And the candidate replied by saluting, saying, yes, sir, I do. Or if this is read to all the master guides, candidates, all of them will salute and say, yes, sir, we do, right? Now, then only after the charge has been read and the candidates have all replied in the affirmative, yes, they will remember to keep the charge, will the candidates be presented the master guide tokens, all right? Now, after they've been presented, invite all those master guides who are in the church to come out, both old and new master guides, including retired master guides, to come out to congratulate them. And if possible, surround these successful candidates uh, in a circle and offer a special consecration prayer for those who have been invested. So that's normally how we conduct a investiture service. All right, so I'm glad I didn't take too much time on this one. I hope all of you will remember this and you have a copy of this presentation.